welcome to Beyond the Fundamentals. In this video, we're going to cover the five solas and why Calvinists should really be calling them the five sinas. In this video, we're going to cover the five solas and show why Calvinists should really be calling them the five sinas. Something I want to point out first real quick is that the Beyond the Fundamentals t-shirts came in. And if you haven't noticed, I'm wearing mine. Those of you who have your Beyond the Fundamentals t-shirts, I want to hear stories from you. I want to know what happened when you wore them out in public. I want to know what kind of conversations you got into, if you had any opportunities to have any conversations. Also, I'd like to hear from you if you think it would be a good idea to keep something like this in stock permanently rather than just the fundraising campaign that we had. So to the five solas or the five scenes. It doesn't take much exposure to Calvinism before one will hear the boasting and cage rattling from Calvinists about the five solas. These five solas are promoted and espoused as if Calvinists exclusively own them, and they are often used as a starting point for the Calvinists to accuse the Bible believer of being one of their big bad boogeymen, such as a semi-Pelagian or an open theist, etc. and so forth. However, anything longer than a quick glance at Calvinism shows conclusively that not only do they not believe the five solas they profess, but they actually oppose them at every turn. Now the five solas are as follows. Sola Scriptura is scripture alone. Sola Fide means faith alone. Sola Gratia means grace alone. Solo Cristo, also known as Solus Cristo, means Christ alone. Soli Deo Gloria means to the glory of God alone. According to GotQuestions.org, which is a Calvinist website, the five solas are five Latin phrases popularized during the Protestant Reformation that emphasize the distinctions between the early reformers and the Roman Catholic Church. The word sola is the Latin word for only, and it was used in relation to five key teachings that define the biblical pleas of Protestants. Now that was a quotation from GotQuestions.org. Notice the phrase biblical pleas of the Protestants. Now, there's no bias there, is there? It's subject to analysis to determine whether or not any pleas were biblical, but they just throw that in there. There's a bias. Now, whenever you're looking up official definitions, remember, even dictionaries sometimes will include historical usage into the definition rather than the definitions of the words themselves or the phrases themselves. So always watch out for that. The next thing you want to notice is the phrase early reformers. Martin Luther is credited with kicking off the Reformation, and he preceded John Calvin by a generation. Calvinists like to lump their JC in with the illustrious and generic reformers, but in reality, John Calvin was just a Johnny-come-lately to the scene of the Reformation. No pun intended. Sola Scriptura emphasizes the Bible alone is the source of authority for Christians. By saying Scripture alone, the reformers rejected both the divine authority of the Roman Catholic Pope and confidence in sacred tradition. That's also from GotQuestions.org. Theopedia says, the inerrant scripture, the Bible, is the sole source of written divine revelation which alone can bind the conscience. Now notice the use of the word soul there used by Theopedia. I like that, but many Lutherans would reject this in favor of the word final, since they have other authorities other than scripture by which they interpret scripture, such as the Book of Concord or the Augsburg Confession. The Calvinists will usually agree to the word soul here as it's written in Sola Scriptura, but when pressed, they will argue that their favorite confession, such as the Westminster Confession of Faith or the 1689 London Baptist Confession or Calvin's Institutes or the supposed preponderance of evidence mounted by their favorite theologians should hold authoritative sway over a local church. Ultimately, they believe that both tradition and supposed orthodoxy play significant roles regarding what can be extracted as authoritative from scripture. But in a discussion, they ultimately deny sole authority and opt for the wording of final authority so that they have wiggle room to include their man-exalting philosophy. It's not uncommon for a Calvinist actually to ridicule the Bible believer for his militant stance on scripture alone in practice rather than just in profession as the Calvinists are known to do. Sola fide, or by faith alone, according to Wikipedia, asserts that good works are not a means or requisite for salvation. Sola fide is the teaching that justification is received by faith alone without any need for good works on the part of the individual. This definition from Wikipedia is actually much better than the Theopedia or the Got Questions definitions, which both seem to be playing word games in an attempt to cover up the fact that they think faith is a work and a condition, neither of which jive with Calvinism, which teaches unconditional election, and that faith comes after salvation and regeneration have occurred. 
Their arguments for the concept that regeneration precedes faith attempt to make the case that faith is somehow a meritorious work if it comes prior to regeneration. In reality, sola fide is addressing the issue of what is required from the human as a condition upon which salvation is then performed by God. The point of this article, sola fide, is that neither good works, works of the law, nor sacerdotal representation, such as priests in a church, is required for the human as a condition of salvation. The only requirement from man upon which salvation is conditioned is faith, and faith alone in Christ alone as the object of that faith. Sola gratia, or only grace, or grace alone, according to Wikipedia, specifically excludes the merit done by a person as part of achieving salvation. Sola gratia is the teaching that salvation comes by divine grace or unmerited favor only, not as something merited by the sinner. This means that salvation is an unmerited gift from God for Jesus' sake. That's what Wikipedia says about it. The emphasis here is on the concept that salvation is a gift. Grace is essentially an unmerited endowment. When compared with faith alone, which addresses what is required from man, grace alone addresses the free availability of the gift of salvation and the basis on which it is bestowed once the condition of faith is met. It is bestowed on the basis of grace, not on the basis of merit. In other words, salvation is a gift not a good or a service provided in exchange for payment offered by the individual. Salvation actually is provided at great cost, but the cost is covered by Jesus Christ, not by the recipient of salvation. Sola Christo, sometimes listed as Solus Christus, according to Got Questions, is through Christ alone. It emphasizes the role of Jesus in salvation. The Roman Catholic tradition had placed church leaders such as priests in the role of intercessor between the laity and God. Reformers emphasize Jesus' role as our high priest who intercedes on our behalf before the Father. According to Theopedia on Solo Cristo, our salvation is accomplished by the mediatorial work of the historical Christ alone. The word accomplished used here by Theopedia is actually very misleading, but that's the subject of a future video on the components of salvation of which no Calvinist has any clue. A proper rendition of the concept of Christ alone would be that Christ alone must be the object of one's faith in order for salvation to transpire. Soli Deo Gloria means to the glory of God alone. According to Theopedia, it is affirmed that because salvation is of God and has been accomplished by God, it is for God's glory and that we must glorify Him always. This being the case, glory and praise should not go to the individual or to a church or to Mary or to saints or to anything else, but only to and for God. You have to remember the historic context of this was to refute Catholicism. Oftentimes Calvinists will use this point to talk to a Bible believer who believes that faith precedes regeneration to try to say that you're trying to get your own glory for your salvation and you're violating this sola if you believe that your faith comes before regeneration and you're trying to get glory for yourself. Of course, all that proves is that they have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. When you go back to the context of the Reformation, it is God, not the church, not the priest, not Mary, not the saints, or anything else that gets the glory for one's salvation. Now, the five solas are held in high regard by many people, so much so that if you call them into question, you'll quickly be labeled as a heretic. But remember, these are not scripture. It can be argued that they are scriptural, and I would agree with that for the most part, but these are summations written by man. These serve a great purpose when going against the specific error of Roman Catholicism during the Reformation or even now, but as standalone statements, they can be misleading depending on how they are defined, how they are used, who is using them, and the context in which they are employed. So never make the mistake of thinking that just because somebody uses one of these revered phrases that they are necessarily using or defining them correctly or This is another ploy or word game that Calvinists will play. For example, they'll accuse you of espousing work salvation if you reject their definition of sola gratia or sola fide. They will accuse you of trying to get the glory for your own salvation if you compare their definition of soli deo gloria with scripture and find it wanting. Calvinists don't have a lot of ammo when it comes to making a positive case for their positions. So their MO is to knock you off the road into one of their many demon ditches as fast as they can to try to put you on the defensive. Now suppose just for a second that there really is a such a thing as a semi-Pelagian, open theist, glory hogging, synergistic, merry worshiping, works, salvation promoting heritage out there. Does a Calvinist spotting such a person mean that their doctrine was any closer or further from scripture than it was before? No, it doesn't. 
So keep an eye out for them avoiding their own doctrines like the plague and instead demonizing you for committing the crime of not sheepishly agreeing with their devilment. They'll play word games with you to try to grease you into either a demon ditch of theirs or into thinking that you agree with them, as they're often known to do with their Gnostic sufficient but not efficient argument which is based on nothing more than the fact that the Calvinist doesn't even know what saves in Scripture. The concept of the five solas almost sounds contradictory since there are five of them, yet each one of them emphasizes aloneness or onlyness as an attribute of salvation. So they really can be better understood categorically as answers to specific questions. Once these five points are viewed in light of the questions they answer, the sola, solo, or solus portion, which means only or alone, doesn't seem to be contradicted by the fact that there are five of these points rather than just one. Let me give you an example. Ask the question, what's the final authority for the believer or for the church? The answer is scripture alone is the final authority or scripture alone is the sole authority really should be the question. So the point of sola scriptura is not saying that scripture alone accomplishes anything necessarily. It's just identifying it as the authority. Scripture alone is the authority. For sola fide, you'd ask the question, what is required from the man in order to be justified? Faith or works? And the answer is faith without works or faith alone. For sola gratia, you could ask, is salvation merited by works or is it a gift or is it a mixture of both? Something like that. And the answer would be that salvation is exclusively an unmerited gift without works and it's by grace alone. For solo Cristo, the question might be, is salvation achieved through the church or through priests or through sacraments or through Christ or through a combination of these things? And the answer would be that salvation is through Christ alone and not through any other person, thing, or organization. And then for Soli Deo Gloria, the question would be, is it proper to venerate Mary as the co-mediatrix or saints or angels as playing an intermediary role in salvation? And the answer is no. All glory, all worship, all veneration for salvation and obedience after salvation, it all goes to God alone. So these questions and answers serve to point out the fact that these five issues arose as a means of addressing and correcting error that was present in the Catholic system. As far as the facts and proper definitions go, the five solas are absolutely spot on. However, we find that Calvinists, who falsely boast most vocally of originating, keeping, and featuring these five solas, are in practical reality the biggest offenders of these tenets. In fact, this is so much so that the actual beliefs of Calvinism are complete opposites of these five commonly boasted features. Now we want to distinguish between a feature and a distinctive. A system such as Calvinism can profess and feature certain points, but if those points are not exclusive to Calvinism, then they are features, not distinctives. Distinctives are the things that are exclusive to a system. It can rightly be said that every distinctive of Calvinism comes straight from Gnosticism. Or to say it negatively, there are no distinctives in Calvinism that did not come from Gnosticism. That would be specifically Augustine's Manachian Gnosticism. When compared with non-Calvinistic groups, such as with traditional Baptists or with Bible-believing Christians, every tenet that is exclusive to Calvinism is repackaged Manachian Gnosticism. There is nothing exclusive to Calvinism that did not come from Gnosticism. The five solas should not be confused with the five points of the tulip. The five solas are professed features of Calvinism, but they are not distinctives. The five points of the tulip are distinctive of Calvinism, and they come from Gnosticism. This is simply unbiased historic fact. I was once talking with a self-obsessed Calvinist who constantly boasted about how educated and intellectually superior he was, and I told him the historic fact that every distinctive of Calvinism originated from Gnosticism. He retorted by referring to the five solas. Well, the five solas are not exclusive to Calvinism. The five points of the tulip, however, are exclusive to Calvinism. When it comes to Calvinists, the more they boast about their own education or their favorite idol's education, the more cheese apparently done fell out of their sandwich along the way. Not all the loonies are in the loony bin. Calvinists often try to pull a quick one on people by making statements that amount to the idea that the soul is originated from Calvinism itself. Now this is demonstrably untrue since these were key features of Luther's theology and he preceded John Calvin by an entire generation. When the Calvinist gets the momentum of his boasting of these matters into full swing, it can be helpful to remind him of how things historically occurred. This is from Wikipedia, but citations are provided. I mentioned that it's from Wikipedia for the sole purpose of joining together in laughter at how predictably the Calvinist will attack the credibility of a fact 
due to the source from which it happens to be quoted rather than based on what the quotation actually says. This will be demonstrated by Calvinists in the comment section under this video on YouTube. I foresee it and predestinate it to be so. The reason they do this is to call attention away from the fact that while they verbally oppose the facts, the reason they do this is to call attention away from the fact that while they verbally oppose the facts, they have no substantive arguments to refute them. This tendency of theirs also exposes the fact that they hold credentials of men to a higher level of esteem than they do scripture. Now they'll demonstrate this as soon as you attempt to use scripture to denounce a quotation from one of their idol theologians. From the Wikipedia article on the five solas, it says the sole, or the solas, were not systematically articulated together until the 20th century. But sola gratia, sola fide, were used in conjunction by the reformers themselves. For example, in 1554, Melanchthon wrote, only by grace do we justify and only by faith are we justified. All of the solas show up in various writings by the Protestant reformers, but they are not cataloged together by any. It goes on to say, the first time all five solas appear compiled together is in Johann Baptiste Metz's 1965, The Church and the World. And there's the citations below. Despite their constant boasting, Calvinism has the five solas all convoluted. Instead of the five solas, if Calvinists were truthful, they would boast of the five sines. Now, sola, solo, or solus is Latin for only or alone. Sine is the Latin word for without, which is a much more appropriate summation of the Calvinist position. Here are the five sines they should be claiming. Sine fide, without faith. Calvinists believe that a person is regenerated prior to, that is, without faith. Sine Christus, without Christ. Calvinists believe that a person's election and salvation was decreed, determined, and settled in eternity past before they were in Christ. Now, if you doubt that, talk to one of them about Ephesians 1.4 and see what they say. They like to add the word to be in there, or they like to leave out the phrase in Christ. They have them being elected outside of Christ. This being the case, it is something other than Christianity. Jesus Christ is the central figure in Christianity through whom salvation comes. Any system or position that has a person's salvation being determined outside of Jesus Christ is, by definition, not Christian. So, solo Christo and their system should actually be sine Christus without Christ because they believe that their election and salvation was settled and decreed when they were outside of Christ. Sine gratia, without grace. To them, people are either elect or they aren't, and nothing ever influences this fact. Grace means gift or given. In Calvinism, nothing is ever given to anyone. Eternal decrees are simply being played out in time. Additionally, there is no grace of any kind offered to most people in their system. In Calvinism, grace is nothing like the grace we find in Scripture. In Scripture, the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Grace is the reality into which all people are now born, with regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost being available to all who believe. In Calvinism, grace is an individualized, volition-overriding force that takes over and seizes the individual and makes them believe. This concept is foreign to Scripture, and it is not grace. Martin Luther writes, Faith is a vital, deliberate trust in God's grace, so certain that it would die a thousand times for it. However, in Calvinism, the individual cannot trust in God's grace until after God's grace irresistibly seizes him. Sine Scriptura, that is, without Scripture. Calvinism is a philosophy that is known and determined prior to the individual's approach to Scripture. Scripture is not authoritative where it counters this philosophy, and in their system it can be discarded, changed, modified, or augmented when needed to match the philosophy. Now this could be done with any book, religious or otherwise, so Scripture is not their authority. Now I've demonstrated this by posting paragraphs about predestination online. The Calvinists lined up to affirm and praise the quotation, but I didn't tell them until later that the quotation came from the Hindu Students Association website. They were not happy. But the point is, they have no regard for Scripture whatsoever. They just have to pretend that they do in order to keep fooling the suckers. Sine Deo Gloria, that is, without glory to God, or all glory to man, would be another way to word this one. Calvinists retain the authority to make passages about themselves that have absolutely nothing to do with them, like Matthew 1.21, Ezekiel 36, John 15, John 10, etc. Their God is such a liar that he is in constant need of help from theologians for correction where scripture didn't get things quite right. 
God is subjected to decisions that were determined within the narrow human reasoning capacity of Gnosticism, and God is not allowed to think, act, or determine anything for himself outside of that system. God owes everything to these superb, godly, dedicated, wise master theologians from Augustine forward, for without them, his message would have been lost in a book that everyone else would mistakenly believe what it actually says. Now, if you're a Calvinist at this point, you're probably fuming and saying something imbecilic like, we Calvinists don't believe those things. You're misrepresenting us. And if this is you, all you're doing is admitting that you couldn't think your way out of a paper bag with scissors and a flashlight. I'm not misrepresenting you at all. I'm informing you of what your system necessarily mandates so that you can ditch it if you're interested in truth. So if you really don't believe the five CNAs and they don't represent your position, then you either don't belong in Calvinism or Calvinism is a philosophical opiate that has you in a spiritual and intellectual stupor. Those are your only two options. You're free to pick whichever one you like. On the other hand, if Calvinists want to retain the sola portion of these features, they would just need to change the object of each statement. For example, scripture alone would become philosophy alone. Faith alone would be regeneration alone. Grace alone would be forcible seizure alone. Christ alone would be election alone. To the glory of God alone would be to the glory of God correcting theologians alone. If you are a Calvinist, those are really your five solas. Always remember that Calvinism is nothing other than a complexity of word games designed to deceive and confuse. Nearly every argument for Calvinism or against Bible believers is merely a philosophical distraction away from the fact that something other than Scripture is the Calvinist's authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe, support, and share. May the Lord bless you, and good day. Ethel, you're going to have to get me some liniment.